back to the series of playing fast while maintaining a good tone. This time I wanted to discuss a fragment of music, a little excerpt that we can perhaps explore some of those techniques, how to switch between them, because that is one of the main attributes that are important to maintain a good tone while playing through a piece. The way you change from technique to technique is extremely important because if you are slightly off position, it's impossible to maintain a good tone. The fingers will be reaching to the strings and therefore there's no sort of solid base, solid foundation for the finger to function from. So I took this little excerpt from uh, the Anjuez first movement by Joaquin Rodrigo and it has many different techniques in it so I thought it would be a good idea. It has scales, it has rasqueados, it has some repeated notes with the thumb uh, also playing at the same time. It has chords, it has uh, melody, a bit of I guess you can call it counter, not really counterpoint, but there's a melody and an accompaniment going on, and uh, high register notes. So those are also important to learn about how to make them really pop out and sing. So first, I want to revisit a bit of the scales, which is the first bit of this excerpt, and I want to now start emphasizing the importance of preparation when you're playing rest stroke scales or free stroke scales or really any scale that is um, in a fast tempo or a moderately fast tempo or even the highest speed tempo I mean it, this is the most important thing to do is to have the desire to prepare for each note as you go through the scale so what I mean by that is if I'm playing only in the air like this, that's all fine and dandy, but when I come to play the speed, I'm doing a lot of motion there, so therefore it will not work. It might work sometimes, but most of the time it won't, and it can be noisy, so even the notes, the discrepancy between the I and M could be different just because I'm not actually prepared. You know, that kind of preparation there, it might produce maybe an ugly sound at slow tempo. But once you speed it up, the important thing for a good tone is the equalness of the tone between the notes. So it's very important to practice that in this fashion, so that you're always ahead of the game. After this, you have this. Uh, this could be uh, a, a place to, to actually focus on because you can do something like this, where you have absolute um, give and take sort of between the, the bottom of sharp and the top of sharp. Right? What I would say it would be an example of a bad tone here would be this. Like there are other notes ringing and the, and the notes have some extraneous noises before and after. So you can make sure that you also are preparing. Even if you vamp here, that those extraneous noises around the notes that you're playing, the two F sharps, will greatly diminish. As you see there. So again, the tone production is really about you having the choice of what tone you want to make. And to have the, 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 the say in this, you have to be on the string prior to playing. I know in the beginning we talked about having a large motion, right? And that is important because the small motion itself needs to have its full oval motion if you go in a magnifying glass to the string. If my finger is not used to doing this full motion, when I come to make it smaller, it will not be a relaxed motion. It will be one of jagged edges. And therefore, you hear the, the I don't want to say excuse, but you hear the comment that I can't play fast, someone tells you, or the student tells you, it's impossible for me to do, you know. It's partly because 
they have not internalized this full motion, alternation between the fingers, prior to attempting to play fast. So that's why it's important to cultivate this kind of approach, I believe, in conjunction with with that, and even less preparation, but still there. So then you still you see how the tone changes by the amount of preparation you do, by the amount of uh, focus you do on uh, grabbing each string, each string prior prior to playing it. So there I had a choice of the tone that I wanted, and that is to me is a good tone. Is when you are at that moment you have a choice which tone to make. Good tone doesn't mean only warm. Beautiful, you know, this can be a good tone. Right? So people play the Ponticello tone. There's, a, there's some players who play a Ponticello. Amazing. I mean, beautiful. The, the, Julian Bream's Ponticello is one of the most beautiful Ponticellos I've ever heard. That is a good tone, too. It's not a bad tone. Or thin, or whatever. It's, it's meant, it serves its purpose beautifully. And that is an example of a good tone. So I want you to understand, it's not just about the roundness of the sound, the consistency of the tone, even in the rasciatos. After the, the ascending scale, you have a, a rasciato. A rasciato, what I understand, yeah, I don't speak Spanish, but I understand it's sort of scratching. So come to do this, I guess it would be called the rasciato, but it's more of a strum to me. So if I'm doing... It's more like I'm strumming the strings, whereas the idea that having the fingers one by one scrape the strings, yes, but at the same time they have to be also together in this type of rascada, where you have a oneness to it. So not this, but this. You see, you, you hear the different iterations of the notes, but they are homogeneous, they are together. Whereas when I play with all the fingers like this, I don't get as good of a tone on the rasgado as this. To my ear, this is much fuller and it's much bolder, serving, again, serving its purpose. Then you have, uh, you have this. Maybe this could be also staccato in the bass. Do that by a bit of vamping here with the, with the, with the finger. Then you have this melody accompaniment thing. So there's almost three tones that I want from this. I want this and I want this to be together, but not overpower the melody. The tricky bit is to maintain it, so I have an equalness between the M, rest stroke, and the A, after it's going to be a free stroke, right? So you want to practice that alone, and try to get, and that's, that is if you decide to do the first one, rest stroke, which you don't have to, but I think it starts announcing the melody in a nice way. So you want all these to pop out of the texture. So the way to do that is, many guitarists talk about this, is either you preset sort of your A finger lower a little bit, so as when you play the chord, it depresses the string automatically there, and it gives you a louder first string in this case. Or you can just feel a little more power with the A finger, and that's more, more of what I like to do. So you can do it even more. Now we come to this cuckoo effect, or nature's call, sort of, uh, of what Rodrigo wanted. It's important to have that um, clear, and because it's on the bases, the hand does need to adjust a little bit, both the I and M, in this case, on the D string, and the P on the sixth string. Right? Because if I'm playing like this, there's plenty of scratching from the winding of the strings, so that's also contributes to your 
evenness of tone and equalness of tone and good tone, in fact, on the bass strings. You see, as opposed to you get a lot of scratching. So if you're used always to play on an oblique angle, it's time to learn to play straight on the string so that you don't create these scratchy, extraneous noises around the note. So as you come to do this, you just flatten the, the nail a little bit and it works, it takes care of itself. And then here, you're going to start doing the high notes there. Right? So for those to really sing, you absolutely need a good release point because if there is no if there's no good release point there at the nail, you're gonna have it catch right at the edge and, and sometimes because the release point is not taken care of so much, we almost cannot figure out why those high notes are not working, you know. So what I like to do, if you look at my uh, nail uh, video that I put, the nail filing, it shows how the that how I file my nails usually, so I take care of the entry point and the release point is a little gentler, but it does round off towards the end. But it also protrudes forward enough so that the string can slide on this on the nail and give a nice tone. Because otherwise, I'll get something like this, as opposed to a lot more nail. Basically, is being used, and therefore, there's a lot more body to the note. And also I'm using a rest stroke, so it's important now come to talk about this to make sure that the hand position does not change a lot when you play from free stroke to rest stroke. Because you're changing a lot of these techniques back and forth, it's important to maintain basically the same hand position. So when you're doing... If I'm gonna flatten the hand right away for the rest stroke, it does feel easier in the beginning, but so I'll be changing a lot of hand positions if I do not maintain the same one, kind of actively maintain the same one. Right? So I'm kind of working from the hand position, the fingers are working from the bass and not letting the hand move to where is most convenient for them. Similar for the thumb. If I'm gonna do this with a thumb, it's gonna also let the hand reach well to the E string. So if you if you don't have enough of a stretch when playing like this, if you normally play like this, it's gonna bring your hand up to where the thumb is most convenient. As you go down here, it's gonna be hard to get a nice tone with the A. So you need to learn to open the hand here as you play things on both outer strings especially. So you see how the tone is maintained because the thumb accommodated the hand. That's very important. So and again we have this and that the, the, the end of the excerpt. So uh, to get that nice bird effect uh, is, is good to have a, a clear bass, you know, and maybe closer a bit to the bass. Anyways, that's a personal choice, but to maintain the evenness of that. So it's important to be decisive on which nail attack you want. And it's all important, you know, it's all very small little details, but this is what really makes uh, a great interpretation. It's all with the details and it's all with you kind of knowing what you're doing throughout. Because there is a lot of changing between the techniques, the hand needs to basically function more or less from the same position. And if not, the fingers need to know what to do in order to accommodate the change of the position. So this is important to think about, especially when you're, again, changing techniques like this. So I hope uh, this helps, and uh, stay tuned for the, uh, another video of this series that seemed to be longer than I expected. But it, I think it's fun, and I think it's good to start exploring excerpts as we did today. Thank you very much.